So then, uh, today we're going to be taking a look at some basic user tutorials for StarMade and today I'm going to be taking you through the basics of uh, building your first ship and uh, a few things that you will want to consider when designing it. It's quite an open building system, so uh, first thing you'll need to do is push X. This will actually uh, put a ship core out in space. You can name it now or you can name it later. I tend to just hit X and press enter and then I've got my core. So I push R on the core. As you can see, it says enter ship core right there with R. So we're gonna get in. And the first thing you'll notice is we're in build mode. Now, build mode is a no clip, uh, free look sort of environment. So we can look around, we can clip through things. You'll notice that if I put down a bunch of these blocks here, which we're gonna look at, I can just sit in them, and if you'll notice, when you're sitting inside a block, it is actually transparent, so it's very useful for uh, fitting out your ship. Your core does have the ability to move around, so you can just move straight away in a core. You don't have to put ship systems on it, but you will find um, that it is going to be useful to actually fit this out properly. So we're going to head down to a shop. And that way, if we need anything additional, I can just buy it from here. I will also tell you the IDs where possible. Um, and obviously, we'll look at some commands. But we're going to be focusing on single player. And uh, I'll give you a few hints if you're running your own, uh, run, your own universe. So there we go. So here we are. We're at the shop. You'll notice there's an icon in the top right corner which says shopping range, just above the radar map. Now... Um, if I was to hit I, you can actually get to all the tabs with any button. So, for example, the shop. This is the shop. Now, you can buy recipes or you can buy blocks. You can also click on an item, like the ship core, and you can buy the recipe. There is also a cubatomic hint here. So if you want to get into Cubitoms, which we, will which we will be covering soon, not this episode, but soon, you'll be able to figure that system out. As you can see, different patterns and so on. If you want to buy a recipe, the recipe is actually um, a server side setting. So, like I say, if um, it depends what the owner of the server has set the cost to. But the default is 5,000 blocks. If you have 5,000 weapons computer blocks, you'll be able to buy a recipe to create the uh, weapons block computer. If I click OK, as you can notice down here, we've got a recipe for a weapons computer. So I'm just going to right click it and we can do the demonstration. So as you can see, it's at level one. It's got 11 hardened hull. That's what, this is what it'll need to build one weapons computer. 11 hardened hull pentas, two blue hull tetras, and seven hardened hull wedge brown. Now, as you can see, that's not a very good uh, blueprint because it's going to take me forever to get all these bits just to make a weapons computer. Now, these are randomly generated, so if you don't like it, what you need to do is click it and sell it back to the shop. And then you'll get 2,500 back because there is a loss involved, so I've lost half of the blocks by, ex by exchanging the blueprint, uh, sorry, recipe. If I buy another one, um, I probably don't have enough now. Yeah, I do. I've got 7,000. So if I go buy a recipe, it'll give me another one. Right click, and now I need two proteins or nine yellow hull pentas. So as you can see, it's random, and you'll get much better uh, choices if you just keep exchanging. But there is a loss involved. All of this is server side, so don't think oh it's going to be 50 percent because some server owners might set it to much higher than 50 and you'll lose a lot more or can you know on my server i actually set the buy recipe to 50 blocks because i'm just trying to encourage people to use factories but anyway i'm going to sell this and uh get back to the tutorial one thing I hadn't explained to you yet was the difference between the flight mode and the build mode. We covered that in build mode you can fly through stuff, so if I press space, which is the way you switch between flight mode and build mode, we can actually go through this shop and come out the other side. As you can see, we've got no clip in build mode. If I'm in flight mode, 
I will crash into things and I can't, you know, I'm in, I am real in the universe as it is, as, as it is. So then, if I push space, you can see there's a big old red arrow sticking out the front of the ship, all right? And then there's another red arrow just up the top of the screen, you can see, which uh, is the uh, direction of the ship itself. The direction which you're seeing in the yellow box is actually the block orientation direction. So if I had a wedge that can obviously be rotated through different or, uh, positions, that arrow would change. Um, I think I can demonstrate it with an SD cockpit computer. So for example, if I stick a cockpit on the top, and what I'm doing here is I'm pressing control, I'm putting my mouse over the main game area, and then I'm rolling the mouse wheel. And then I can, as you can see, the orientation preview over on the right side there, you can see it's changing. So I'll put a camera facing that way, and then I'll put a camera facing that way, and I'm just gonna put a camera facing all the way around in all the directions that you can you can have and we'll put one down down so now we've got cameras facing in all directions okay so then if i press space and go back into flight mode i can now cycle through the cameras with the left and right arrows so left right see and as you can see the orientation of the camera is changing correctly so if i spin out See, every time it is moving the viewpoint. So you can have CCTV systems inside your ships and it is actually, you know, it's changing the actual angle as, as you set it. So that's one thing. So like I say, you probably wouldn't do it like this, but um, that's one way to do it. So anyway, X. Now, if I press uh, R to enter the core and then space to go into build mode, right. Let's talk about ship systems for a bit. I've got in my hotbar, on my slot one, I've got the STHCT XM 3.4 power, which we all like to call the power recharge block. Next to it, we have the SD shield disperser, which says exactly what it does on the tin. Um, and then we've got the hyperflux coil thruster, which is used for adding thrust. The weapons computer, which is used to be connected with your antimatter, antimatter cannon cluster, uh, the faction module which is the highest damage resist block and often people place that in front of their core for additional defense but it's basically your griefing uh, control, anti-griefing protection. There's also power tanks which work with the power recharger blocks and these are like your power capacity expansion. We've already looked at the SD cockpit computer, but it is worth mentioning that wherever you have your cockpit on your com on your ship, you can use a docking beam from the camera. Okay, so you don't need to before you it would only ever come from the core, but now the docking beam can come from your camera. So that's an interesting point to note. Right then, <clears throat> but we will be covering docking beams very soon. Now the first thing you're going to need is the power block. The power block has an ID of 2, so if you're in single player, um, you would use give ID, player name, and then you would say 2 and 2000, for example, if you wanted 2000 power blocks. Replace player name with your name. Um, and power is a really interesting little mini game uh, in, in StarMade. There is an XYZ reactor, so I'm just going to get some hull and we can build off the core here so I can show you what I mean. There are many different reactor designs and it's almost like the holy grail trying to find the most energy efficient reactor. So what we're going to do is we're going to build a 5x5x5 five by five by five here, okay, because that's the, sort of the done thing really. and. Um, yeah, I'm just going to sort of go through, if I just, where is it, I've run out of these, haven't I, I've run out of them now, so I'll put some thrusters on. Add thrusters anywhere on your ship, in one group for a slight bonus, but it is only slight, um, and that will add thrust to your ship, okay, so you can see at the top of the screen near the directional arrow, which is turning now, you can see that there is a thrust slash mass, you've got 6.1 thrust and 3.5 mass, so... Obviously, if I add a block, it's going to add 0.1 mass. So 
So every 10 blocks is one mass in this game. Each thruster will give you looks like 1.5 or something, but like I say, there is a slight bonus for having them all together. If I put this one on its own, it's going to give me one. One thrust for 0.1 mass. But obviously if I put it on this group here, I'm getting a slight bonus for having them all in a group. So it's actually giving me 1.6. So I'm getting an additional 0.6 on this block than if I was to put it on its own, just because they're together. Okay? And that's pretty much all you need to know about thrusters. Thrusters are very easy. You don't have to put them at the back. You don't even have to put them on the outside. This animation here may in fact be replaced by much cleverer animation blocks. And then you, these will be omni, uh, omnidirectional thrusters. Um, so anyway, now we've got some thrusters on here. We've got a little bed to work with. I'm going to get the power recharger blocks. Now the first thing you can do is keep them all disconnected. I'm just going to demonstrate the basic idea of that. Okay. Now if you have this, this is what's called as a checkerboard reactor. This reactor can be expanded up, obviously. And the idea is that none of the blocks is actually, actually touch. None of the blocks touch each other. So they just keep going up, 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 up. And as long as it can be, the more powerful the reactor will be. Okay. So like, for example, we're at five by four right now. So how about we actually finish this off properly, shall we? Let's put some more thrusters on here. And a thing, so there we go. Right, so it's five by five now, is it? Yep. So I'm gonna extend this so the whole thing is five by five. So we're gonna go press control, okay, for advanced build mode. And I'm actually going to use odd symmetry and uh, YZ plane. So I'm just going to find the middle point. So this is mirror symmetry mode. We will be covering this more in detail, so don't worry. I haven't forgotten. Um, we're going to push, like I say, I need five high, so there's two here. So I'm going to set the Y axis to three. Now if I hold control and put my mouse over, you can see now we're getting this yellow column. That is where we're going to build. So, bearing in mind that symmetry is on, I'm going to sit sort of close to the middle and work from the back forward. There we go, done. So now we've got a 5x5 five five checkerboard reactor, and this is producing 7,369 E per second. The beauty of these ones is that you can actually put the shields or power tanks straight down the middle, or don't and save on mass, because the air is there, you know? So it's up to you. You could either ram shields or power tanks or engines in here to save space, or you can uh, leave it open. It doesn't really matter. So there you go. That is the first, what I would call the checkerboard reactor. Now, if I just jump out and move across, we'll go on to another type of reactor which you can use. Because power generation in StarMade is pretty much your mini game. Um, you're not really going to want to. <clears throat> you're not really going to want to go up against another player or even the pirates if you have bad power generation. Um, so let's just make ourselves a little thruster platform to start. There we go, so we've got a 5x5, five five. yep, 5x5, five five. <clears throat> so then, the next uh, pattern was a little bit more complicated, you can see it in my earlier videos, um, and you'll notice, you'll probably recognise this, it had different layers for each, you know, so you can look it up, it's called the, oh gosh, it's been so long now, I think it's the 95... Is it 9654 generator? If you look, uh, I'm going to make a new playlist for everybody. Um, and I might even just go over all the, all the generators again, but just covering these briefly, you would actually put something like this down. And there were th three different layers that alternated at the middle. So you'd go layer one, layer two, layer three, and then you'd go layer two, layer one, past it. And it had quite a specific pattern, and it was managing to produce over 9,000 um, compared to this one. 
So that was very useful. But the biggest problem with the, this sort of design was it only worked in a 5x5. Five five. So it was great for 5x5s, five five but not so great if you wanted it to be considerably larger. Um, and also this one tended to win if it was smaller. So it was quite an interesting sort of time. But if I just go into the final reactor, because this is the one that most people tend to be using, or a, vari a variant of, which is slightly more efficient. So if I go here, I've got another platform. If I just literally go and make a box, because like I say, this is the sort of reactor, there are others, and I think I might cover another one just before we finish, but the, the problem is, the higher up you go, the harder it is, because there's diminishing returns. The soft cap is 1.2 million. Once you go over 1.2 million, the more blocks you put down, the less you're actually gonna get for it. Um, so, I mean, if I was just to show this as an example, if I just unset the symmetry quickly, I'm gonna put a shield block on that corner, that corner, and then the opposite, so that corner, and that corner. That there now is getting 5,891. Now, if I was to, you know, fill in the inside with another one, which I probably can do, in fact, hang on a sec. May as well, while we're demonstrating this. So you put another one in here, and bear in mind that this is not meant to be, you know, this isn't the, uh, you're meant to make them bigger than this, okay? I'm making it small, just, so you can see what I'm doing. But effectively, it's a box within a box within a box, and then you attach diagonal corners to make the most out of it. So there you are. All right, so now we're gonna do the corners. So look, there's one there. So put one there, one there. Oh gosh, what happened there? That's not what I wanted to do, hang on. Oh, right, I see what's going on there. It's going to need another one, because this isn't, yeah, because <laughs> it's too small. And this is why it's too small. <laughs> so where is it? Where is it? I need to get another thrust block blong. Uh, shield blocks is what we're using. Put another one up there. And another one down there. And then, put that there. I'm trying to do this quickly for you guys. <laughs> So here we go, another one there. So this is just trying to get every single space with a block and not touching. I think we've got it. Okay, so now we're up to 8,782. And of course, bearing in mind that um, really, you get the most benefit for this sort of reactor when you make it much, much bigger. And you can kind of ignore that because that there is just due to the size again. Um, <clears throat> So yeah, that is uh, the box reactor that everyone keeps building. I've got one more for you guys, so just uh, thanks for sticking with it. And like I say, we'll be doing something else in the next tutorial. So um, if I just quickly throw this down, <laughs> it's funny because I'll just demonstrate the actual box because I haven't done that yet. Um, if I was to just make a box, okay <clears throat> and i have explained this in previous tutorials so i do apologize if i've uh, missed anything out here we go so that there is a reactor okay it it's sort of <clears throat> the maximum dimensions it, it's as if it's full okay it treats it as if it's a solid but box yeah so if i build it <clears throat> this could be full this whole box area here could be full but it only needs this to count. So that's 2,836, okay? And if I was to take the same number of blocks, so I'll take three, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One thousand. See the difference? Same number of blocks, this is 1,000 energy per second, okay? If I take those blocks and spread them out, it's as if I have a much larger, so a big solid block is really wasteful for mass. Mass means more thrust, 
More thrust means more surface area. More surface area means more armor. More armor means more mass. More mass needs more thrust. More mass, <laughs> more thrust, more power. More power, more mass. And before you know it, you're flying around in a Titan. Um, so this is this is the thing. You can get very much caught out by trying to build your systems around your weapon, you know. So it's it's an interesting little thing that a lot of people have problem with. I had problems with it too. And every time they change the game, people have to retune or rebuild. So it's not abnormal. But here we go. So we've looked at this, which is the classical corner reactor, as I would call it. And of course, you've got many ways of trying to make them intersect. So, you know, let's give you a demo of what that could look like. Okay, so another one here, and another one here. Okay, there you go. There's something to make you get your get your brains spinning, or at least working. You know, this as a concept. That's that's one way of doing it. There are other ways of doing it. We were looking at one last night with Calberry, and um, it was very interesting actually to see what he does with that. Um, there is, of course, the most obvious one which we haven't covered and a hybrid version. So if I just quickly take the symmetry modes and whack them on, there we go. Right, now if I just literally just slide all the sliders up, so we've got 10 by 10 by 10, bang, reactor. Right, what have we got? We have 103,157 energies per second, and it is 11 by 19 by 19. So yeah, there's also what we call the brute force way, which means I'm not even going to think about the mini-game. I'm just going to throw them down. Okay, so like I was saying, um, this is the brute force reactor. The bigger you make it, the more power you'll get. You can break the soft cap of 1.2 with this type of design, but there may be changes to power generation which could limit this and also add scope for auxiliary reactors. And I'll be revisiting this the day that happens. Now there is in fact a new uh, reactor which I was working on which is kind of a hybrid of the box which we looked at here and the uh, brute force. Now it's pretty lazy, I'm not going to lie, it's pretty damn lazy, however um, the reason it's lazy, I'll, I'll just show you okay. I made it to tune so if I want a gun and I know the gun needs 1 million power, well, let's just, in fact, let's not be ridiculous. Okay, let's do this properly. <clears throat> so I'm going to build a big block of power tanks. Now this block of power tanks produce, let's see how much it stores right now. It stores 5.6 million, okay? So 5.6 million, if I was to shoot three shots per second, they can require over a million energy per shot at the moment. So... <clears throat> or per round at least. And then what you would basically do, oh I've run out, give ID uh, TO tab, you can press tab to auto complete your name, to 1000 and then we've got some more, there we go. <coughs> right, so basically what I'm going to do, if I'm clever about it, because obviously I'm not, <laughs> I'm going to actually go all the way around, of course I'll need more than a thousand, won't I? I'm going to go all the way around this and basically cover it all the way around <coughs> with these tanks. Okay, now leaving a gap so I can get in the core. This went a bit wrong here, sorry about that. So effectively I want to coat my reactor with recharger blocks. There go. Right. And I do top and bottom as well, okay? Just to give it that perfect box, because that's the whole point. I'm making a box around the tanks because the furthermost out recharger blocks give you the, the you know the most amount of power. So you could say, you could argue, that the ones in the middle are dead weight. And therefore, you could just cut them out and replace them with tanks or shields. Now someone else has actually, this is quite a basic time-saving way of doing it. It's not the most advanced hybrid reactor. However, I have seen people get good results from doing something similar to this, only 
they actually alternated each layer. So it was much more like this, only instead of having the central part, another reactor, they've actually alternated between tanks and reactor. So if I just go underneath, let's see, yep, so we've got all the symmetry in the right place. Okay, so now we've got our uh, hybrid reactor and this is producing 532, uh, so half a million energy per second from this, but with 5.6 million storage. Even though that's not really fair because I should take this off. There, there we go, otherwise it's not really fair, is it? So, this is a, just under half a million recharge out of a 30 by 30 by 30, but it does have 5.6 million um, storage, which is really, that's the, that's the kicker right there because it's all very well and good having a high recharge value, but if you don't have tanks, it's, you're just forever recharging. So, uh, yeah. But I think we've covered all the basic reactors here. If there's any I've missed, please send them in, and I'd gladly come and do a video with you showing that particular type of uh, reactor. Next, we'll be covering different things, such as shielding, uh, docking, weapons, those sorts of things. So uh, please be sure to check out the next tutorial. And as always, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.